so the lights are all installed. Everything's done. I just need to go around and get the plugs in. So we'll do that real quick. And then after this, I just have to program the controller. And I'll show you how that's done later on in the video. So before I turn on this controller for the lights, I just want to do some wire management here and kind of clean this up, make it look good, kind of secure these wires. And So this is the transformer for the controller. Um, it knocks it down to 12 volts. I didn't want to plug this directly into a 110 uh, socket, so I have a power strip up here. It'll give me a little bit of surge prote protection, and I think that'll be a better connection up there. So. I've got that mounted. I'll clean up that wire over there and we'll get it plugged in and turn these lights on and see what they do. Okay, I've got the next light set up. The controller's all programmed. Let's turn this back on again. And that's what we're looking at so far. And the lights are very bright. We only have them at 50% right now because it's in the middle of the day. I have the ramp times, all the set points and stuff I think figured out, but we're going to have to watch it for a while and see how to actually program it. Yeah, I think we got it. This looks good. Should be interesting when it gets dark. I have it coming on at five in the morning and going off at eight at night. So we may extend or minus that down a little bit, just depending, but looks cool. All right, so Nathan Donnelly here with Crop King out of Bradwood Farms. And we're going through and we're evaluating basically no lights versus the next lights that they put up here a couple months ago. And the meter that I'm using is going to be this advanced quantum par meter by Photobio. Um, I believe this guy is going to run under 300 bucks, which is a far better price point for people than some of those light core meters that I have were anywhere from 600 to 3000 bucks for those. So this is going to go through and again, check our par light which is PAR photosynthetic active radiation, which is the lights that plant use. And here in the lettuce side where we're not going through and running any lights, you'll see that we're getting around 130, 140 um, micromoles. And then we'll roll this over here underneath the lights where the tomatoes are at so we can go through and see how much more additional light that we're getting with the next lights. So yeah, then we come over here underneath the next lights and we're see that we're picking up um, 235. So essentially we're picking up close to an additional 100 micromoles with running these lights. And um, I'm correct that you guys are running these at about 60%, right? So we could even go through and ratchet that up even more to go through and even increase light intensity here. But I think that with basically where we're at weather-wise, that 250 running it for, um, 14, 16 hours a day. I'd have to pull my chart up and see, but that should be getting us somewhere around 16 to 18 uh, DLI, which is where basically the target we're at for tomatoes. So. So we turn the lights up to 80% and then we picked up to 323 so we picked up some more light and then here we'll go ahead and we'll crank them up to 100 and we're getting a lot of influence from the outside sun too so i'll have to keep waiting for clouds for yeah. better accurate readings but we can go ahead and crank that up to 100 and see where it lands at but i think you're 60 percent based on what i got at that 250 because that was what we were targeting right that 250 300 par of light at crop level and you know this crops down here pretty low as it goes through and it grows up the light intensity to go through and increase because as we go through and get closer to the light that number should go through and go up as well so so yeah i say 60 percent where you guys are at is perfectly fine for where this crop's at and running it for 14 hours a day like i said i can pull a ppfd chart up and we can look at it real quick and make sure that i'm right on where we're landing okay. so I was wondering, I was kind of guessing. Yeah. So, so yeah, if we want to crank her up to 100 just for giggles. <laughs> so yeah, we turn that up to 100%. We're getting a lot of sun influence now. The cloud cover's breaking up, but we're floating here around between 5 and 650 
micromoles. So, so yeah, my recommendation based on what we saw, and I'll pull up on my phone here the PPFD chart and see where we're at based on that 250, 260 reading we got, where we're landing at. So PPFD, so PPFD is your instant readout. It's basically just another way of saying micromoles. Um, it's PPFD, photon flux, uh, density, which is basically telling you how much light we're getting in an instant reading. And so I can go through and say, okay, our average PPFD was 250. And then it tells us if we average 250 for X number of hours, what our DLI is. And DLI is? DLI is daily light integral, okay. which is the basically the, the PPFD that is accumulated for those 12 hours totals your DLI. And so when we're talking about total light that we want to get on a crop or what our targets are, we're looking at DLI. And so if we know that we're going to run the lights for 14 hours and we want to achieve a DLI of 17, 18, or 20, however we want to be, we go through and we see how much light we need to go through and be supplying to that crop. Okay. So, so this is the PPFD chart and when we went through and we set up the lighting footprint here, we were targeting 250 PPFD, which is also going to be your moles per meter squared. And we could go down through here and we scroll here and we are running the lights for 14 hours a day. 250, 14. So that tells me that we are getting about 16.2 um, DLI, daily light integral, for running these lights. So that's a little low if we were just doing sole source lighting. But as you guys saw with this natural sunlight coming in and we're getting influxes, so we're probably going to be averaging closer to 350 is probably where we're averaging. And if we go over, and we're getting it for more than 14 hours a day, but then that puts us at basically the 17.6, which is going to be our target for vine crops. Okay. So, you know, we've got the sun too, and it's really bright now. Yeah. Um, so just having some additional light to kind of stabilize that in the early mornings and then going into the evenings as the sun goes through and moves, help them bring that average up, especially on cloudy days too. Then we'll go through and we'll see better performance and better uh, fruit set and so on in this crop. So... So yeah, I'd leave it at the 60%, stick around that 250, but we've proven that if we feel like we need more light when we get into fall or when you go through and you get into your winter markets and stuff like that to go through and grow these on into the season, we'll probably look at increasing that up. But now that we're getting into spring, longer days, tilt to the earth, better quality of light coming into the greenhouse at 60%, I think we're good with. So in the previous video, we talked about um, outdoor light versus indoor light. We were at get basically the transmission we were getting through this seven-year-old poly was um, somewhere around 55, 60% of the light outside, inside. And ordered new poly here once the weather breaks a little bit better. We'll go through and we'll pull new poly on this structure. And then we should be getting somewhere between um, 80, 85% light transmission with that new poly. So I wanted to go through the next light controls real quick for you so you can see where we're at. Shows us at 78 degrees. We're running the lights at 60% and then come on at 6 a.m. and go off at 2100 hours. And if we go down through the programming, you can see the outlook output power is 60%. Light timer, that's where you set up the times. Now channel B is going to be for the lattice side. rise and fall. So we set the ramp time at 60 minutes and all that does is it allows the lights to dim over a 60 minute time period from full brightness of 60 percent down to zero. So it kind of mimics sunrise and sunset. So that's a pretty cool little feature. And we have this set at 95 degrees so if it gets to 95 degrees in the greenhouse we assume that the sun is out and it'll shut off the lights at 95. And that's it. So, yeah, we really like it. I think it's working out really well. We'll see what the plant growth is, but so far, even in the few days that we've had the lights on, the plants have really taken off. The beans have grown at least four or five inches, and the tomatoes are up probably two or three inches. So, it's working good. So, we're really lucky that Crop King is so close by, and Nathan gets to come out and visit every once in a while really learned a lot about the lights today and we love sharing the information with you guys. 
So in the future, we're going to do a few videos on strawberry nutrients with Nathan. So look forward to that. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on the lights. I certainly enjoyed learning about them. So please leave me any suggestions, comments, or questions down below. We'll see you guys next video.